All right, so you decided that you want to start a business for yourself. And you know what? You may have even decided that maybe cutting grass is a good idea. Well, I'm here to tell you how to make that happen, how to get started in that right here, right now. First off, we need to talk equipment. So what do you need for equipment? You obviously need something to cut grass with, so you need to need a mower. You need to get all those parts that the mower can't get to, so you're going to need a tr string trimmer. Then number three, you need to clean up the grass that ends up on the driveway and things like that. So let's get started with the equipment. First, we have the mower. Okay, so let's talk about mowing. I took some video earlier of mowing and the audio got all screwed up. It's been a very windy day. So I'm gonna roll that audio for you, but notice my lips will be moving, but it's not gonna match up. Just letting you know that in advance. So when dealing with mowing, you wanna have maybe a 21 inch or a 22 inch mower to start. You can use whatever you have sitting in your garage. You can pick one up off the curb, get it fixed, but make sure it's well maintained. Make sure you have the oil changed, the spark plug changed, the air filter changed, and the blades are sharpened. Very important to have the blades sharpened. Very important for quality of cut. Chances are whatever properties you're gonna be servicing are similar to the properties that you already are servicing yourself, or your own property. That's what's gonna be in your local neighborhood. So do you only need whatever kind of lawnmower that you use current? If you don't have one, you need to purchase one. I would recommend getting a self-propelled one. The popular ones are Hondas, but those are only gonna be available for 2023, and then they get rid of them. I think the Husqvarna's are gonna be fast approaching, taking over their place. They still come with the Honda engines. You have that, you have that option, but you definitely wanna start looking at possibly a self-propelled lawnmower. They're going to weigh a little bit more if you got to pick it up, but it's going to be a lot easier to do your mowing. Again, 21 inch, 22 mower, inch mower, plenty, plenty size. I recommend a gas, not an electric, again, because of the cost of batteries. And it's just a matter of filling up that tank when you need it. There's one more thing too. To get a mower, make sure you got your proper PPE. Those things are loud as well as the weed whips and the blowers. So make sure you're protecting your ears, you're protecting your eyes. You got everything that you need for personal protection. One of the other things you're going to need is a string trimmer or a weed whip or a weed whacker, whatever you prefer to call it. You know what I mean. You're going to need one of these bad boys. This is the first one I purchased. I got this off of uh, Facebook Marketplace for $5. I actually ran when I got it. it, had a bad head on it. I cleaned out the carburetor. It ran even better after that. As far as replacing the head, I went to Walmart, picked up a cheap one, still got it to this day. This was my favorite weed whip, my only weed whip for many, many years until I started going into battery. I do recommend when you're first starting off, go with gas over battery, unless you already have battery. Those batteries can get really expensive. In case you're wondering, about one amp per item per property. If you're dealing with about quarter acre properties, if you're dealing with quarter acre properties, one amp for the blower, one amp, amp for the whip, that kind of a thing. The mower, I always recommend gas for mowers at this point in time. Technology quite ain't there. You don't have to spend gobs of money for a weed whip. I do recommend if you are going to purchase one, find one with a straight shaft on it, as opposed to a curved shaft, because you can turn it to the side and use it for energy. It's really the mark of a professional when you're weed whipping every single time you mow. That's the difference between a professional service and a non-professional service. Well, it's not the only one, but it's one of them. Let's talk blowers. This is probably one of the big hangups that people come up because they don't really have, typically have these in their house. When I started my business, I didn't have blowers. How do you get around that? Well, there's an easy way and a cheap way to get around that. You probably already have it around your house. One of these things. You don't have one of these? You probably got one of these. A broom. You blow the sidewalk off with the uh, mower discharge, sweep up what's left, done and over. When you are first starting off, you're not worried too much about efficiency. You're worried about being able to get the job done and get the job done well. Typically, I would say this would be one of the issues if you're dealing with these standard quarter acre city properties that you would go into electric blower. Again, one amp for the blower per property. This is a four amp blower, so if I'm doing four properties in a day, that's plenty better. If you're doing eight properties in a week, you just break them up over two days. Most guys will end up with this exact blower here. The PB2520, made by Echo. The reason why, it's available at Home Depot. People know the name is Echo as being professional, and well, you're trying to be a professional. So you're gonna go out and probably drop, I think they're up to 200 bucks right now, over at Home Depot with all of the inflationary. Great blower, lasting me for 
three years until I went and picked up the battery powered one and it would still probably last me. I just wanted to try to make the transformation faster. Highly recommend this particular blower. They're available at Home Depot if you don't have a local power store or something near your house. They work great. They'll do the job. I still keep this around for those really big leaks to clean up. Probably better to use gas as opposed to battery, unless that's going to be part of your shtick in your business is that you only use batteries. But Okay, so it's time to talk about the last piece of equipment that you're going to need. The ride. Now, you might be saying, Mike, I'm 14. I can't, I don't even have a driver's license, let alone have access to a car. Even if you don't have access to a car, it doesn't mean you can't get started. You got two feet, you can push a mower to your site, you can get started. You just got to be careful about, well, where you have your customer. If you got a bicycle, hey, strap that blower, strap that whip to that mower, hold it in back, and ride your bicycle there. Expand your uh, horizons, expand where you can go for your customers. It doesn't really matter too much where you start. A lot of people think, hey, I need a pickup truck. Three quarter ton or a one ton pickup truck, you don't need any of that to get started in mowing. You see how small the lawn mower is? All you need is something to be able to transport that. It doesn't need to be a pickup truck. If you have a pickup truck, even great, it could be something as small as a Ford Ranger. That is a great vehicle to start off with and you're ahead of the game if you got that. You know, when I started, I was fortunate enough to have an SUV. Yeah, I say I was fortunate enough to have an SUV. And at the time, I was already doing snow removal. So I had one of those little back racks that had the ramp on it for the snow blower. Guess what? I stuck it in the back of the SUV, wheeled the uh, mower right on top of it, kept the weed whackers and extra gas in the back of the SUV. Probably wasn't the smartest thing I've ever done. That's how I got started. I'll be honest with you. I went around town. I saw a lot of other people doing the exact same thing. Paul Jameson actually wrote a book called Cut That Grass and Make That Cash. He mentions in this book what he got started with, and I believe it was a Honda Civic, by sticking it in the trunk of his Honda Civic. All you need is a way to get around. It could be your own two feet. And when we get into talking about, well, how to market and advertise yourself, we're going to talk about how to make that happen so that you can limit where you're going to have your customers. You still with me? Great because this is where it gets interesting. This is where we're gonna talk about how to be a real professional, not just a guy cutting grass, but a real professional. We're gonna start going through those steps, of everything you need to know behind the scenes to make your business run. And we're gonna start with the uber sexy topic of taxes. So here's the big deal, yes. You want to pay taxes. I'm going to talk to you from the perspective of being in the United States. I also want to comment, I'm not a certified public accountant. Take what I have to say with a grain of salt. I'm going to try to explain this without using any number, but you want it to pay your tax. It's the one thing that's going to help keep you as a professional. Chart your expenses. Chart how much money you're taking in. This is the difference between being professional and unprofessional. You don't need to have an LLC in order to pay taxes. You don't need to have a DBA don't need any of those things you can actually file your taxes and file and create your business under your own name so you could create your business as John Doe landscaping you might think oh well but someday I might want to call it some XYZ lawn care guess what you can still do that when you go ahead file your LLC you change the name to XYZ lawn care you send out an email to your customers you know due to our due, due to us growing we in order to serve our customers better we have uh, filed as a limited liability company we will still be performing this excellent same excellent service that you would do but we will be under a new name which will be XYZ landscaping LLC you could go ahead start your business under your own name file your taxes federal government makes it really easy for you to file your tax. They make it really hard for you to cheat on your tax. They make it really easy for you to pay your tax. So the big key to figuring this out is an acronym called CRM. It stands for Customer Relations Management. It's software that you will use in order to chart your incomes, schedule your appointments, all kinds of hordes of other things, following setting be able to have all your pricing in one place. It's just a piece of software that's just unfathomably excellent to have. There's a lot of CRMs out there. You can pay for a CRM. There's actually some pretty good ones out there that are there for free. Some of the CRMs that are really popular are Yardbook, L&M, Service Autopilot, Jobber. Uh, these are all really, some of them you have to pay a monthly subscription fee for. Some CRMs you don't have to. I personally, I use Square. I don't pay a monthly fee for it. The only fees I pay for is when people pay me with credit cards, I pay them credit card fees. So the reason why I'm mentioning Square is just because it's free and it's actually what I use. But you can use whatever you'd like. I'm not here to dictate or advertise for Square. They're not paying me to do anything. I'm only mentioning that. And the reason why I started was because I like their credit card processing fees and processing and everything else when it came down to it. 
that I was able to take the retail space and make it work for my service industry. That is going to be key to have some type of CRM for your business. Because if you don't have that, it's going to make it very difficult to chart so many other different things. Go ahead, download a CRM, figure things out, figure out what you can do with it, and you're going to see it's going to open up a lot of doors for you and save you a lot of time. How do you gain your custom advertising? Best way to advertise, especially when you're dealing with having to deal with not having a vehicle, is going to be door-to-door -door flyers by flyering up your local neighborhood. You might want to knock on the doors and let people know that you're there to provide service and hand them a flyer. If you're one of these youngsters, if you're in high school, you're going to want to put that on your flyer. People will hire you just based on that. As well as on your flyer, you're going to need a phone number, a web address, you're going to need an email. You can set up an email through Gmail. Go ahead and set up your web page either through Weebly, WordPress, or something like that, and you can use that particular domain. You know, your name.wordpress.com is okay when you're first starting out. You know, your name.weebly.com. You do want to, and I really recommend doing Gmail because of how you can get a phone number. So you can get a phone number through Google Voice. I've mentioned this before with my snow removal business. By setting up with Google Voice, just kind of go into Google and put in Google Voice and it'll show you how to set it up, how to get a number connected to that email address. Use that same email address. You can set it up so it brings your cell phone. You do want to have a separate number because if you grow, which is likely to happen, and you start hiring other people, you still don't want those phone calls constantly going through your own cell phone. You want to have a phone number that you can either transfer to some other phone someplace else someone else can answer your calls for you that is what i really highly recommend is you get a separate number you can set it up one up with google voice it's absolutely free you just need a gmail account and while you got a gmail account you set it up to use as your business email account as well if you had a name in mind go ahead and use your name in that email that you had in mind that until you get your first customer you don't have a business even before you even worry about having all the equipment you need a customer you need customers to service before you have any services to provide. This is the key number one thing you want to start with is customer acquisition. Let's talk a little bit about insurance. A lot of guys ask, how do I get insurance? You can start by either using one of the insurance companies like Nexus. One of the things that I had when I first went to my personal insurance company, they told me I had to be, I had to be in business for three years with insurance for three years with no claims on that insurance for them to even consider insuring me. So you have to have insurance in order to get insurance. So you can either look at one of those insurance companies like Next that will they'll give an insurance policy to my shoe, or you can go ahead and call a local broker, an insurance broker that deals with a lot of different companies, can set you up with a company that will insure you and you can have options then. So when dealing with insurance, you, there's a lot of different options to, to consider and to look at. First off, you're going to need general liability insurance. But you're also gonna need insurance for your vehicle. Did you realize that the insurance liability insurance that you've probably been using on your vehicle isn't going to work once they find out you're making money using your vehicle it could continue to be a personal vehicle and you continue to, but you have to get a commercial insurance policy for your vehicle before you get all weary and crazy about this keep in mind by the time you couple this in with your liability insurance your vehicle insurance might act, actually go down not up but go down to what you're paying for a commercial policy it really depends on what kind of company you're doing and what kind of premiums they charge. But it is possible. That's what happened with me. I ended up switching companies because of my commercial policy. And my commercial policy for my vehicles is actually less than what I was paying for a personal policy. Keep that in mind when you're dealing with insurance. It doesn't always mean that it's going to add up to be more. It's probably not going to be astronomically less. But you might find yourself paying 10, 20 bucks less a year. I just have a few notes of personal advice that I wanted to leave you with. Number one big question that gets asked, when should I start? What kind of economic issues could there be? That kind of thing. Let me tell you, the best time to start is right now. Always going to be an excuse not to start. You don't have to quit your day job to start in this business. You just have to be committed to it. You just have to go ahead and, and say you're going to do it. It's the best time to start right now. This is not some kind of get rich quick scheme. Sure, there's ability to make a lot of money on it. This is far from get rich quick. A lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of things that are going to happen, a lot of things that can go wrong when you're doing this. And just remember that when all those things are going wrong, yeah, you signed up for this. On that note, I'll see you next time.